A, projectile motion. We could have used energy to solve projectile motion problems. We can find the velocity. We just, you know, we don't find time from that, but we can use this to find velocities and then find time elsewhere. So three balls are thrown off a cliff with the same speed, 20 meters per second, let's say, but in different directions. Which ball has the greatest speed just before it hits the ground? So one's thrown up, one's thrown horizontal, one's thrown down. So all in favor of ball A, greatest speed. All in favor of ball B, greatest speed. All in favor of ball C, greatest speed. All right. Some of you are brave enough to answer on this. The rest of you, not brave enough to answer. This is the value of those clickers. Is that everybody answers <clears throat> and they don't look at their neighbors so much. <coughs> All right. Well, let's just reason our way through. They sit here. At that point in time, what's the initial energy state for all three balls? They have all have the same MGY, right? They all start from exactly the same height. But they also have, they all have some kinetic energy as well, right? They all have kinetic energy of one half MV squared. Because they're all given the same speed, right? So their initial energy state is the same. They all start at the same height. They all have the same speed. So they have the same kinetic energy, the same potential energy. At the end of the day, down here, let's look at ball A. What's its energy final state? Any potential energy left? No, it's all going to be kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv final squared. Ball B. It's going to be all kinetic, right? Ball C. Kinetic. Okay. Hey, question. Are these V's the same for A, B, and C? Okay. If balls, if, if balls, so are we comfortable with the idea that they all start with the same initial energy? Because they start at the same height and they have the same speed. We're not comfortable with that idea? The directions are different, but V, and kinetic energy doesn't determine direction, right? So let's just look at the beginning. The very beginning, ignore which direction they're going. They start from the exact same height, right? And they all have a speed of 10 meters per second. Uh, let's just go to that. Initial state. Initial means nothing has happened yet. They have actually not gone anywhere. So initial state is they both have... They all three have 10 meters per second, and they're all 10 meters up in the air, whatever, right? So the initial state, they start with the exact same energy. Are we comfortable with that? We got it. Initial is not three seconds into it. It's right at the very, very beginning. So at the very, very beginning, they have the same energy. Are we comfortable with that idea? It's a form of V and it's a form of kinetic and potential. Now let's go to the very end. The very end, where do they all end up? On the ground, right? So they all have lost their potential energy, right? They've all lost whatever potential energy they had, they've lost. Which means, where did that potential energy go? Where did it go? It went into the kinetic energy. Right? It was converted from potential to kinetic. So if they all had, let me do this. If they all had the initial same kinetic energy, their final energy is going to be 
this kinetic final is going to be whatever their initial was plus whatever energy there was in the MGY, right? That also was converted into their kinetic energy. So they all end up with the same kinetic energy if energy is conserved. If they all start with the same energy, they must all end with the same energy. Unless we lost energy somewhere. Or we gained energy somewhere. If we're in physics land, where can we lose or gain energy? What will take the energy away? What will give energy in this problem? Friction. Friction is the only thing. We're not pushing the balls halfway through in the air, giving them energy. We're not adding anything to it. If we remove friction, air resistance, what's left? There's no way to take energy away from them, right? There's no way to add energy to it. So if they start with this much energy, they all must end with that much energy. And if they all end with the same energy, then they all have the same speed. But there is something that is different. Not everything is the same. What is different? The height that they ended up going up and over, yep. Delta X is different. Time is different. All the other things are different. All we're saying is their energy is the same, and as a result, velocity ends up being the same for each one of them. How long it takes to get there, where they land, and their actual path that they take are not the same. Right? Think back to when we did Newton's third law. Newton's third law says that equal and opposite force, right? Bug hits car. They both experience the same force, but that's all that they experience the same. They have different masses, therefore they have different accelerations. Right? Same thing here. Energy is the same. As a result, the velocity is the same, but everything else is different. The time, where they went, how far, that kind of stuff. Let's think about it from another perspective a little bit. Let's just look at this one and this one. So, B and C. A and C, I should say. A, ball comes up, comes back to this height. What do I know about the velocity at this height? It's going to be negative 20 or whatever. If I gave it, if I gave it 20 here, it's going to be negative 20, right? Will it not be the same as that one? 20 down, right? Especially if they're, if it was. 20 degrees above the horizontal, 20 degrees below the horizontal are going to be identical, right? At this point in time, A and B, A and C are the same just later in time. Later in time, you know, one second later, it looks the same. So when it gets to here, they will have the same speed. Just later in time. It will take longer for that to happen. Now if we look, the question is, are they all going to come into the ground at the same angle? No, that's not necessarily true. This one here, the magnitude of the speed, I haven't lost any of that, any of that horizontal stuff. I just gained the Y ends up being the same energy. So we could solve, how could I use conservation energy with projectile motion? Well, I could figure out how high a ball goes. There's its initial energy state. There's its final energy state. Right? At the very top, what do I have? Potential energy, right? Oh, if I throw it straight up. If I throw it straight up, make it even easier. Throw the ball straight up, it has no horizontal. So if I throw it straight up, here it has kinetic energy at the bottom, because I gave it some kinetic energy. Up here, it's all potential energy, conservation of energy. I can figure out all kinds of stuff. I can figure out velocity up and down. 
If I know its height, I can figure out what initial velocity I threw it at to get to that height. If I know its initial velocity, I can figure out how high it went, because that's what y is. And then if I need to, then I can go to my other equations to find time, the length of time. So if I throw a ball up, it's going to go up and reach zero velocity here. If I throw that same ball down, it never reaches zero velocity, right? Well, so, but is there force acting on it when it's going up? Okay. Let's, let's calm down here. But when I, let me put the ball, it comes, now it's coming down. Gravity's acting on it. Is it going the same speed as it was when I threw it down? Why not? If I have frictionless land, if I'm in a shh, if I'm in a frictionless world, I throw a ball up. If I throw it up with 10 meters per second, it'll go up to zero, and then when it comes back down at the same height, it'll be doing 10. That, are we comfortable with that? There's nothing to slow it down. So it's the same as the one I threw down with 10. So I throw it up with 10, I throw it down with 10. Right? So it's, it, it's later in time that that's actually happening. It'll be quicker to get to the ground, but ultimately if I had a sensor measuring speed, it would be the same. 